What is the best optic setup for a carbine style rifle? All right, guys, welcome back to the range. Today, we are going to talk about the best optic setup for a carbine style rifle, okay? There are tons and tons of options out there on the market today, and it can get really confusing about what type of optic to put on your carbine. All of our rifles here today are AR-15 style platforms, and we have five different rifles with five different optic setups and uh, we're going to talk through each of the rifle uh, here, and we're also going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the way that we have the optics set up on each of these rifles, and then maybe some of the specific uses or reasons why we would set them up this way. So I hope this is going to clear up some confusion for you guys. Uh, and you know, here's the thing: if you have a lot of carbine rifles and, and and you you buy optics and they don't quite work and you end up you end up wasting a lot of money trying to get the setup that you want so we're going to try to clear that confusion up here today so let's start out with something very very simple we'll start out with the simplest optics that we have out here in this this is our first rifle that we're going to talk about you guys might have seen this rifle before this is the rifle that i keep in my vehicle this is my truck gun all right now this carbine is just simply iron sights all right fixed iron sights so um what are the advantages of just having fixed iron sights on your rifle well i would say the biggest advantage of this setup is going to be simply reliability, right? We don't have to worry about batteries. We don't have to worry about turning the optic on if we need to use the rifle. Uh, we don't have to worry about this thing getting bumped or knocked around and potentially losing zero. Uh, it's just a bulletproof way to aim the rifle. Uh, it's always going to be there. It's, it's going to hold zero and it's going to work when you need it. So. I think we overlook iron sights on a rifle these days uh, more so than we should. This particular style of iron sights, we have two different apertures. We have a small peep in the back and then we also have a large peep. That large peep is made for us to be able to aim this rifle in low light conditions or if we were trying to get a faster target acquisition, we would use the large aperture. The smaller aperture in the rear sight is going to give us better accuracy at range, all right? The front sight post again is fixed on this A-frame style front sight post and um, just bulletproof. Now, what's the disadvantage to this? Well, you know, iron sights, uh, they don't give us any magnification, obviously. So we're gonna have a limited range in, with, with our iron sights, right? We can still shoot out to a pretty good distance with these things, but you know, you're, you, you are limited with iron sights. Um, other disadvantages to this, we talked about using the larger aperture for target acquisition with iron sights, but it's still not, you're not going to have as good of target acquisition as with the holographic sight or the red dot, uh, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. So straight up iron sights, don't be afraid to run a rifle this way. Um, it's worked. It worked for years and years and years before we came out with all these fancy holographic red dots and all this other crap. So uh, there's your first option, fixed iron sights, all right? Let's move to the next rifle that we have out here on the table, or carbine, all right? I know I don't even want to get into the conversation about this carbine right here uh, in terms of what do you call it. We'll just call it a carbine. All right, so this has a holographic sight on it. What's the major advantage of the holographic sight? For me, it's target acquisition, all right? In a close quarters combat scenario, uh, if I'm having to take fast, fast shots and have uh, an open field of view, right? Good situational awareness, maybe I'm clearing rooms or uh, shooting close up targets, this is gonna give me the best target acquisition. As you guys can see on this particular holographic sight, I have this riser. Uh, this is actually new. I just actually mounted this holographic sight. This is the Vortex uh, UH-1 onto this riser. This is a unity riser, and it basically just raises the sight up, okay? I really, really like this because we talk about target acquisition and uh, taking quick shots with this holographic sight. 
This puts me in a really heads up position when I use the weapon. I found myself when I had this holographic sight mounted to the actual uh, rail or the, the base of the weapon here, the top, the top rail. I found myself shouldering the rifle and then having to slightly adjust my head to bring my eye down into alignment with the reticle. This sight riser has actually prevented that. It gives me um, a lot faster target acquisition and just puts me in a more natural position to maintain situational awareness and take quick shots, uh, which is what this weapon is designed for. Disadvantages with this, similar to the iron sights, we're limited on the range that we can shoot, right? Distance with this holographic sight. Um, you know, you can run these with magnifiers. I've never liked using magnifiers with holographic sights. They're just heavy and clunky, and I really don't think they, they, uh, they give you a very clear um, picture, especially when shooting at targets out at a, at a long distance, say 300 plus meters. Um, so we're definitely limited with range on this. Uh, another disadvantage of any electronic sight is it does take batteries, right? So it takes batteries, batteries can die. Uh, it has electronic components which can fail. And also we have to turn the sight on to use it. So uh, with our iron sights, again, we just pick the rifle up. She's ready to go with this. We gotta pick the rifle up, turn the sight on, hope the battery's good to go and then we can take our shot. So major disadvantages to the holographic sight is we are limited on range and then the electronic nature of the sight and the batteries and all that good stuff. So, but it's a great choice, close quarters combat, quick target acquisition. This is gonna be your best setup. Get it up off the top of the weapon and give yourself a nice natural head position, shooting position, and it's gonna help you with your situational awareness. Along with this holographic sight, you'll see we do have backup iron sights mounted on this weapon at that 45 degree angle, so we can flip those up. In the case this thing does not work, we do have our backup sights there, which I would recommend on pretty much every weapon that you choose to, uh, to run. All right, let's get into our first weapon here that actually has a, a scope mounted on it. All right, you'll see all these scopes are mounted with cantilever mounts. Um, with this weapon, we have backup iron sights also, same sights mounted on the 45 degree angle. Uh, this is actually an AR-10, so it's a 308 caliber, all right? We have, because this is a bigger round, we have much, we can get much more range out of this weapon. It's just a much more powerful round than the 556. Uh, so for, for this AR-10, I have got a scope on here. This is a Vortex Razor. This is a one by six by 24. So this will give me up to six power magnification, which will allow me to utilize the extra range that I can get out of this 308 round, all right? What's the advantage with a scope? Well, you get that magnification, right? You can take long shots. Uh, you can be much more accurate at range. You can take much more precision sh uh, shots at that range. And um, another great thing about the scope, you don't have to worry about batteries, right? The scope doesn't take batteries. This one particular does have a battery in it that illuminates the reticle, but the scope will work without that reticle being illuminated. It's in there, it's ready to rock and roll. So we get magnification, we don't have to worry about batteries running out. We don't have to worry about turning this thing on. We shoulder the rifle, the scope's ready to rock and roll. All right, so that's huge advantage of running a scope on a rifle. Some disadvantages of running the scope. Um, target acquisition is gonna be a little slower with a scope always. So if you're transitioning targets or you're having to shoulder the weapon and take really quick shots, you're gonna be slower with a scope than you are with a holographic sight or a red dot, okay? Uh, other disadvantages, obviously this scope can, can get not hit, bumped around. If you drop it, it can lose zero pretty easy. Um, they are a little more fragile uh, in terms of holding, it's a precision optic, right? So in terms of holding that perfect zero out at distance. So you got a little bit more, uh, a, a little bit more fragile of an optic here. Um, another disadvantage of a scope is if you live down here in the south, you know how it is, you pull the weapon out of your car or out of your house. It takes a while for this optic to get warmed up to the ambient air temperature. While it's doing that, these lenses on the scope are going to get fogged up 
over and over again. You can wipe them until the scope is the temperature of the ambient air. It's going to be fogged up and you're not going to be able to see out of it. All right. So I love running scopes on my carbines. Uh, and this is a great one right here. The Vortex Razor one to six power is uh, what I have on this 308 carbine right here. We'll talk about rifle number four. All right. You see, we have a scope on this rifle also. This is a one to four power scope. Uh, this is a 5.56 versus a 308, which means this weapon has less range, less power than this weapon, which is why I chose to put a one to four power instead of a one to six power. All right, one to four power is about all I need on a AR-15 style platform, AR-15. Uh, you know, this is... Uh, very similar setup again it's just a four power what makes this different is this secondary optic up here on the top this is a little red dot sight uh, it's a vortex venom all right you can see it's mounted right to the top of that cantilever mount now this is actually the setup that my lpo and the seal teams ran right here one to four power with a little red dot on the top the advantage of this setup right here is we get all the advantages of the scope that we just talked about. We get the magnification, uh, we get the, the longer range, um, we get no electronics, it works great. But if we have close range targets, again, we talked about the disadvantage being target acquisition with a scope. If we have short range targets or we move into a CQC type scenario, close quarters combat, we have this red dot mounted on top. All right, so we can transition from having a look through the scope to actually just simply using the, the red dot on the top of the scope. This is a really, really great setup. I highly recommend this for a uh, AR-15 platform. Um, it just gives you the advantages that we talked about of the holographic sight paired with the advantages of the scope that we talked about. Uh, now, there's another way to run this that actually might be a little more advantageous. If you can see, this red dot is mounted way, way high over the bore, okay? So you're not going to get at 10 yards with this setup, you're not going to be able to get this red dot point of aim, point of impact. It's too high over the bore. I run out of adjustment, right? So this thing is always going to shoot low inside of about 25 yards. So Point of aim, point of impact inside of 25 is pretty much impossible um, just because of the height over war. So let's take a look at this similar setup. We have a Vortex Razor. This is a one to six power. It's a little much for an AR-15 platform, but hey, the extra magnification is no big deal. We, we're in control of that, all right? Um, so this actually has, we have the red dot mounted on a 45, 45 degree angle here. Uh, so what that allows us to do, it allows us to sight the red dot in better, right? It's not so high over the bore, so we have less deviation between where this reticle on the red dot is and our actu the actual bore of our weapon. Um, one disadvantage maybe of this is uh, this 45 versus the red dot mounted on the top is basically transitioning from the scope to the red dot. It's going to take some practice if you're used to shouldering the weapon, to actually cant the weapon and fire the weapon in a controlled manner with the weapon canted like this, right? So with it mounted on the top, you can keep the rifle shouldered in the same position as you were looking through the scope and you simply lift your eyes and everything stays the same. You lift your eyes up and you've got the red dot right there on top, right? So we may have a little quicker transition when we've got the red dot mounted on top of the cantilever mount, we may have a little quicker transition from the scope to the red dot than this manner. But uh, in terms of accuracy, I would say this 45 degree mount with the red dot is probably the way to go. The only difference is you're gonna have to practice with it and get used to canting the weapon and transitioning from the scope to the red dot, all right? These are all great setups, guys. Play with it, see what you like. Um, I highly recommend having more than one carbine rifle. All right, it's great to have one carbine rifle with a holographic sight that is specifically for close quarters combat scenarios. And it's also great to have another carbine rifle that has a actually a scope mounted on it so you can get that magnification and uh, maximize the range uh, that the weapon is capable of, of shooting. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, drop us a comment, tell us what you run on your carbine style rifle. Enough said.